Welcome to the channel. Here is another amazing story of photography and photographer. Don't forget to subscribe. The story of Elizabeth Miller, from a top model to a photographer who took famous photographs of German concentration camps. Elizabeth Miller was born in New York in 1907 in the family of an engineer and an amateur photographer. When the girl was seven years old, her mother became seriously ill and could not look after the child, so she was sent to live with friends in Brooklyn. A tragedy occurred here, the girl was completely violated, which caused her enormous psychological trauma. True, the ordeal for the girl did not end there, her father, a photographer, often photographed his daughter naked, which continued from a young age until she was almost twenty years old. While working with her father may have instilled in her a love of photography, it certainly wasn't good for her psyche either. But before she became a famous photographer, Elizabeth Miller became a famous fashion model. Late one evening, 19-year-old Elizabeth walked out of her Manhattan apartment, crossed the road, and was nearly hit by an oncoming car. A stranger saved her from the tragedy, and later it turned out that it was Condé Nast, the famous publisher and owner of Vogue magazine. A few months later, Miller's photographs graced the covers of Britty SH and American Vogue. Miller's life was luxurious, but it did not satisfy the famous model at all, the girl was not at all attracted by the passive role of a fashion model. Her life changed again when Steakin showed her the work of Man Ray in 1929. The famous photographer and surrealist artist was extremely popular in the USA and Europe at that time. Inspired by his work, Miller decided to leave her modeling career and home in New York and went to Paris with the hope of becoming Ray's student. Thanks to her perseverance, as well as excellent external data, she was able to achieve this. All this time, she was his muse, a talented student and part-time lover. Together, with Ray, I used the solarization technique. She became an active participant in the surrealist movement and became close to Picasso, he painted her portrait. As often happened in the art world, Ray was often credited with works that Miller actually created. Of course, Elizabeth did not tolerate this for long. Soon the girl opened her own studio in Montparnasse, and her clients were iconic fashion designers Jean Patou, Elsa Schiaparelli, and Coco Chanel. Among her works, from this time, are portraits of Joseph Cornell, actresses Lillian Harvey, and Gertrude Lawrence. In 1933, the only solo exhibition of Miller's works took place in the gallery of New York art dealer Julian Levy. At the same time, she played the main role in the avant-garde film The Blood of a Poet by Jean Cocteau. In 1934, Vanity Fair hailed her as one of the most important photographers of the time. However, her career was put on pause when she met Egyptian businessman Aziz Bey, whom she almost immediately married. Lee decided to close her studio in Paris and moved to Cairo. Although Miller did not work as a professional photographer during this period, her Egyptian photographs, including Portrait of Space, are considered among the artist's most striking surrealist images. During this period, she also photographed for British Vogue. In 1937, Lee Miller left her husband and returned to Paris, where she met her future husband, the English surrealist artist and curator of exhibitions of contemporary art, Roland Penrose. With the outbreak of World War II, Miller found it increasingly difficult to focus on fashion. She applied for accreditation as a war correspondent. Elizabeth became the only female war photographer in Europe, and her contribution to war journalism was unparalleled. She joined a U.S. infantry division and was on the front line of the Allied advance from Normandy to Paris. Although she took many shocking and horrifying war photographs, one of the most famous images was the photo of Lee herself in 1945. After Miller and her friend David Sherman, they took photos of each other, visited the concentration camps, they went into Adolf Hitler's empty apartment and took some photos. Lee, completely undressed, sits in the Führer's bathroom, and next to her are her boots, stained with the mud of the Dachau concentration camp. Rough soldier's boots on the floor contrast sharply with the beauty of the female body. A photographic portrait of the Fuhrer is contrasted with an erotic sculpture on the bathroom table. The photography and sculpture had been brought by Miller and Sherman from other rooms, and the bathtub rug and boots were stained with dust from the liberated Dachau concentration camp where the photographers had worked in the early afternoon. 
Miller literally washes away the horrors of war. After the war, when Miller was already 40 years old, she became pregnant by the collector and surrealist artist Roland Penrose, married him and moved to New York. Suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, Elizabeth never recovered from her experiences on the front lines and became addicted to alcohol. After a while, she was able to get rid of depression and alcohol addiction and rediscover herself. The woman took up cooking very successfully. Lee collected several thousand recipes from around the world, invented hundreds of her own, became famous for feasting at her home outside England and won several international cooking competitions. Her surreal creations included blue spaghetti, pink cauliflower, and Coca-Cola marshmallow ice cream, and her recipes were often published in Vogue magazine. Lee Miller died of cancer at the age of 70. And only after her death, the son discovered an archive of her photographs, negatives, and filming for Vogue in the attic, realizing the path his mother had gone through. Until then, I saw her as a drinking, hysterical woman. I re-evaluated my entire attitude towards her. Miller even hid a terrible trauma from her childhood. When I told my father, Anthony admitted, it was incredibly moving. He said, I wish we all knew this, it would allow us to understand her. Since then, Anthony has dedicated his life to the work of reconstructing her story, revealing the identity of his own mother as he never knew her. He archived her work and wrote biographies of both of his parents. In addition, in 2021, filming began on a war biopic starring Kate Winslet, and although now the story of the fashion model and war correspondent has become public, many of the adventures of this incredible woman will remain a secret 